I'm Melissa Idris and this is The Brand, the show about advertising, how it works and how it works on us. Now joining me on the show today, I have Harminder Singh, publisher of Marketing Magazine. He's better known within industry circles as Ham. Uh, and I also have Angia Pulungan, who is the commercial, the hair care commercial director for PNG Malaysia. Welcome, guys, to the show. Thank you. Now, we've just celebrated International Women's Day on March 8th. So, traditionally, advertising and marketing has always been more about uh, fantasy and, and as opposed to reality, more about female idolization as opposed to female representation or, or uh, female empowerment. Uh, but recently, we've seen this change happen in the way brands represent and market to women. And one of the uh, brands that's really celebrating the way uh, they're marketing to women and celebrating women empowerment has been Pantene Malaysia with the uh, Wanita Basi campaign. So I thought we'd start there. Uh, Angia, can we talk a little bit about the Wanita Basi campaign? Give us a quick overview of what this campaign entails. So Wanita Bersi campaign is actually is a local amplification of like the global campaign that's runs called Strong is Beautiful mm -hmm. that was rolled out in 2015. And as we go into Malaysia, we found the words of like Wanita Bersi, which currently captured the essence of what Strong is Beautiful really means, even for Malaysians. So, so iron, iron women. Iron women, iron, basically, yes. right? So and um, that's captured not just the strength physically but I think even mentally that woman carries today which I think embodied the whole mission that Pantene is carrying. So we started that campaign starting in June um, 2018 with Yuna which is I think a global superstar from mm -hmm. Malaysia and mm -hmm. she has gone through a lot of hardship and like being a go try to go through global and then even being an artist with a hijab is not an easy thing. Right. And when she started her career, there is even her producers is actually recommending her to take out her hijab, but she didn't. And right. she still made it. So I think that's really captured of like the strength that she has inside and that's inspired us to bring in more beautiful stories for Malaysian women to inspire them and show them what Wanita Vasi really is. So, Ham, I mean, in your experience, I mean, you're an industry veteran, if I may. <laughs> and, you know, you've really seen how um, brands change the way they market and position themselves when targeting a female audience. Um, walk us through some of your observations and how you've seen this evolve. Well, uh, many years ago, Sun Silk did a uh, television commercial for a shampoo brand. I'm sorry, I think it's your competitor. Yes, that's okay. It's okay. Uh, I also think that you're one of the biggest advertisers on Astro. So well, it's a free marketplace, yeah, isn't it? You're on the right place. Yeah. Uh, and in that Sun Silk uh, particular commercial, they did something very radical. They did not show hair. Uh, it was a wonderful lady and she had a tudong and all that. And uh, it was, I think, the first commercial in the, in the world which didn't show hair. Right. And uh, it was also one of the most successful <laughs> commercials in our market. Even then. though yeah. there was not a single strand of hair yeah. actually for People, a hair care For a hair care product. product. So I was quite amazed with that. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think it's a culture thing also. Uh, maybe the brand has become generic and uh, you know, like, like Pantene itself also is another very powerful. Well, well I, I thought it was interesting with the uh, Braids of Strength uh, films that, that Pantene Malaysia put out was the use of sport. So yes, you had Yuna um, last year for the first film, but the most recent ones had uh, Farah Ann as well as uh, Noor Suryani, who was eight months pregnant when she um, competed at the Olympic Games. Right? She was the most heavily pregnant athlete there. So the use of athletes um, and the, the focus of women in sport, was that a conscious decision? I think it is a conscious decision if we start to understand on like why let's say women is becoming very strong and confident we found the influence of sports is very critical mm -hmm. so not just leading a healthy lifestyle or active lifestyles to make you like more active or healthier but i think even as a younger age sports teach a lot of life valuable lessons sure. for example like teamwork and disciplines perseverance um like those things are very critical to make women becoming stronger. Mm. And so that's why Pantene actually chose to take her out of sports because I think to make you become stronger, 
I think sports is one of the critical elements that women or girls should have. What about the choice of Farah Ann as the spokesperson? I mean, as, as the focus of this ad, I thought that was quite interesting because, I mean, Farah Ann, having, despite having won all the gold medals that she's won, was the subject of cyberbullying, right? Really, I mean, the backlash online from, from um, you know, despite winning, and she, I believe she also sustained injuries. So using Farah Ann as the focus of, you know, braids of strength, and telling the story from the perspective of her sister. So all in all, you've got a double whammy. You've got a woman who is strong in sports uh, and persevered in life, but also you've got this sisterhood uh, story about other women empowering other women. So tell us a little bit about that. So you already pointed out, right? So Farah Ann won a gold medal, and instead of getting praises from the Malaysians, she's actually getting a lot of bullying, like which normally would make people just quit if you're normal, your usual people. But she's not right, and despite her injuries, people say she couldn't do gymnasts anymore. Mm -hmm. um, she still pushed through, and despite being strong, I think she also need a su strong support system. In this case, it's actually her sister. Um, so that would just kind kind of like build the bonding that like even though you're strong, you also need other women because sometimes it's not always like this, right? It's always been ups Up and, and down, down. Yeah, you and you the, always you need, need support those system. support system within you and people who believe in you and want you to be successful. Right. And I think that's a very very beautiful story on how these two women are athletes and they're basically competing in sort of sense, but continue to support each other. I think that's a very beautiful. Aham, is that, is that um, a trend that you're seeing, you know, the use of sport in advertising, use of female athletes in advertising, as opposed to, um, say, models and, uh, you know, singers or actresses? Have you, have you noticed that trend? Ladies first. Oh, oh ladies oh. first. <laughs> well, Pen Pen Team Malaysia has decided to go with uh, athletes. I think other than sports brand obviously would play in sports, but mm. I think not many, especially hair care or beauty brands that actually want to take athletes because of course the perception of gold standard of beauty is still there. But where Pantene want to do it is basically we want real women, we want real stories that like people can relate to, that like we're basically like saying that's Previously, it was model, have a beautiful hair that is unachievable. We're mm. creating this kind of stereotype magazines. like So relatable, yes. re rela relatability is yes. important. And real woman, right? Like it's, it's not model who has a size zero, for example. That's mm. like, or this trend of, uh, uh, what you call it, highlighting women and supporting women has been going on for, I think, the last uh, 10 years in particular mm. in our advertising space. Even in Cannes, when uh, the best uh, comeback in the world is judged, they, uh, they have a policy that at least 30% of the jury must be female. So right. this has been uh, going on for some time. I, I believe that um, in Malaysia, we, we have a lot of uh, healthy respect for women. And as Malaysians, we, we, are, a, we are caring and uh, very... Uh, Generous I mean, that's, that's wonderful to know, but I think the danger is for brands when, whether, to, whether they can fall into the trap of tokenism and faux feminism. And I want to get your thoughts on that after this. So we'll be back with more on the brand. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us on The Brand. Now we're talking about marketing to women. It's not a new idea. It's been around for, for ages now, but it has somewhat evolved because while women are, um, have control, a huge uh, purchasing power, have, have huge decisions of the, over the household purchasing um, decisions, we are also seeing a change in the way brands position themselves in marketing to women. Now I want to talk to Hum a little bit about, about this because Brands want to position themselves on the right side of history. They want to be seen to be championing the cause, especially after the Me Too movement. However, how do, how do brands avoid tokenism and faux feminism? That means just jumping on the bandwagon, especially when it comes to things like International Women's Day and you know, taking a stand 
uh, behind the Me Too movement. Okay, let's get one thing straight. Brands are not here to to make this world an idealistic place to live. You in. don't think so? Yes, brands are here to sell their products at the end of the day. And that's how they profit and that's how they progress. There are brands that behave well and there are brands that don't behave well and don't care. Because advertising and everything is actually a commercial driven activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It is not a fantasy. But, but don't you think that consumers now yes expect brands to take a position on cultural issues. On yes. So what happened is that consumers have become indifferent to advertising. Mm. They're skeptical, uh, skept, skept, skeptical mm. about advertising. So over the years, brands have adopted what we call the brand purpose in their messaging. And this will, will, uh, will cover all areas, humanitarian work, um, even uh, being a uh, partner for some kind of a, Good, good deed or some means or some or, you know along the way. Okay. Uh, but they won't. Uh, as a, what they won't uh, just uh, let things like Mother's Day and everything pass by. Because right. these are again opportunities for them to. So you're align. saying there is a certain level of exploitation um, for you know causes by the advertising industry. No, I'm saying that there are brands who get involved in good causes for bad reasons. For bad reasons. Yes. And how do consumers, can consumers tell? Can consumers tell um, the difference? The consumers can tell the difference when it becomes a bit obvious. Like for example, the green movement. Mm -hmm. Then we had the green washing. I'm not going to classify it now as this is woman washing, but you, you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> how do you when a soya sauce that? company <laughs> in Kuala Lipis is celebrating Women's Day, you just ask the question whether where, who are these people and where did they come from all of a sudden? So, so does, does a brand have to have a certain relevance? I mean, every brand has a relevance to women. We are half the population. <laughs> of course, we are half the population, correct, yes. So we are the decision makers. I mean, sorry, mommy. Um, <laughs> no, not you women can. are very detailed. They are the ones who go to the supermarket. When they buy the shampoo, they actually look at the things, the, the formula and everything. Right. Not unlike us male, males. <laughs> so they are very detailed, very loyal. They do the research mm -hmm. and they are very powerful uh, decision makers in more than just household grocery. Well, I, and I completely um, agree. So they are important uh, segment for marketers to go for. But, but there's also a way, right, so that um, while I can't generalize an entire gender, I mean, research has shown that women are more likely to give to causes than men. Um, Angie, how do you respond to that? I mean, uh, as a brand owner, do you think that there are brands that can't, that jump on the bandwagon that perhaps exploit certain causes or certain celebrations um, and can consumers tell? I think um, I can't say for other brands because obviously I'm not familiar with like or not aware but I think in terms of like for Pantene itself we live a I think it's all about consistency mm. and what the brands can actually do. Can a brand change the world? Maybe it's too good to be true but can a brand change some part of some aspect for a woman's life? Some brand can. Do you think brands should be taking, um, you know, taking a position when it comes to social issues? Is that is that something that brands need to do to win over consumers in a competitive marketplace? Yes, there are brands that uh, align themselves with social issues, like uh, Volvo align themselves with road safety issues, so and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, they are. And uh, what I'm saying is. Sometimes pretenders to the throne, let me put it this way. Pretenders to the cause. Tell us more, mix. what yeah. do you mean by pretenders to the cause? Like the incongruency of a brand that makes shoes and is suddenly interested in um, championing a cause which is completely against or rather not in context with their brand function or values. Okay, so that's it has I mean. to have, in your mind, it has to have some relevance. So it has relevance, the relevance then, that's, then it becomes meaningful, then it becomes uh, convincing. Mm. Again, one more time, advertising is not a fantasy. Advertising is an exercise in dramatization. In dramatization? Yes. Okay. Because you have to sell a product. Otherwise, how do, how do we, we, we fund advertising? Well, I, I agree that um, you know, there needs to be a relevance. It has to be more than just talk, right, Ham? It has to be more than just a brand saying, you know, we celebrate women empowerment, but really do, 
does nothing behind the scenes. So for instance, I mean, if a brand's advertising message is um, is about female empowerment, it really shouldn't be contradicted by their business practices. So they shouldn't be having um, you know, an equal pay for the genders. They, shouldn't, they should have more representation, perhaps, or sex, no sexual harassment in the workplace. And I think that is something that... You look at Procter & Gamble, the largest advertiser in the world is Procter & Gamble. Right. Okay. They, that, they can, did the campaign a few years ago for Dove. I think Dove? No, Dove is Unilever. Dove is Unilever, okay. <laughs> Okay, you live the second largest advertiser in the world. <laughs> and they did a campaign for Dove, which was real woman, real beauty. Yeah. You know, they were very successful. Mm. It resonated, mm -hmm. did well. So when these large advertisers, when they take on a course, they go all the way down to the ground. Like I've seen campaigns done in India, where they go all the way down to the ground and make a real meaningful uh, addition to a people's so, A minds. social yeah. change, yeah. right? I know, a change in the conversation yeah. about equality and uh, self-perception. I just, I guess I'm trying to put my finger on what makes that resonance, that what, what makes it resonate with people. Uh, have you discovered the, the secret sauce? <laughs> I think it's all about, <laughs> I wouldn't say that I've discovered a secret sauce, but I think again, does your product delivers the promises, right? Does it really meaningful? Mm -hmm. Like, and then how does your product actually what helps to improve people's life? And that's what in PNG we believe is like touching life and improving life is basically our whole mission. So all of the products that we actually produce and manufactured helps to improve people's life. Right. It will so you, not have to, you, yes. you have to support the words that you're Correct. saying. Correct. And talk. Yes. So like Pantene, for example, our Pro V formula is actually has been developed to actually make you a strong, give you a stronger hair. Mm. And as a woman, hair is very important. Right, so when you have a bad hair day, you can easily say, I don't want to go, right? Like, like, but mm -hmm. when you have a great hair, you feel like, oh, I think today I can conquer the world. In that it's too sense. too good to stay home. <laughs> but, but the other thing about PNG also, I want to talk about not just Pantene, but also Gillette. So mm -hmm. within the company, at, uh, at, you know, under the umbrella of PNG, you're also pushing this message of getting men involved in changing the conversation about masculinity. We're going to discuss more about that on the brand after these messages. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us on The Brand. Now we're looking at toxic masculinity after uh, recently Gillette launched a new ad. Uh, they are calling it instead no longer the best a man can get, now it's the best a man can be. So this message is urging men to be better, but it has divided viewers. Now before we get the thoughts of our panellists today about the backlash from that ad, let's have a look at the ad itself. Bullying. The Me Too movement against sexual toxic harassment. masculinity. Is this the best a man can get? Is it? We can't hide from it. It's been going on far too long. We can't laugh it off. Who's the daddy? What I actually think she's trying to say. Making the same old excuses. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. But something finally changed. Allegations regarding sexual assault and sexual harassment. But she says he's the wrong person. And there will be no going back. Because we, we believe in the best in men. Men need to hold other men accountable. Smile, sweetie. Come on. To say the right thing. To act the right way. Not cool, not cool. Some already are. In ways big and small. I am strong. I am strong. But some is not enough. It's not how we treat each other, okay? Okay. Because the boys watching today will be the men of tomorrow. So first of all, when you watched the ad, did you expect it to get the backlash that it um, got 
uh, subsequently? Not at all, because <laughs> I think that's what is expected from men today, right? To in order to make men and women are equal, which mm -hmm. is what I think we should be at. It shouldn't be women more superior versus men, or either way, it's supposed to be equal. Mm -hmm. We should be getting the same opportunity, the same, op like basically chances, equal pay. And I think when when basically there's a lot of respect within men itself that needs to be conveyed much more, right? Like, and those cat calling and everything is right. still happen. So I think when, when Gillette actually launched this campaign, I felt this is a very, very great campaign on how men can also change the behavior it takes two to tango. Right? Well, I thought what was interesting was this ad focused so much on men. So I mean, Gillette traditionally shaving, you know, so you know, targeting a male audience. Mm -hmm. But the entire ad, <laughs> you, you're stroking your beard there. Well, I used to handle the lead, <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't shave, but I still <laughs> do work. You know, it's, it's interesting because um, this ad, while focusing on men targeting a male audience, is really about female empowerment. It's about changing the conversation about toxic masculinity. Do you, do you agree? Yes. I think we live in a world today of complaints. All complaints. Yes. So Who's complaining her? everything, ev everything that has done has been done in uh, advertising or social or whatever space. There will always be somebody who says no good. No. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. You mm. know? Like you can't have a conversation with anybody nowadays that is really meaningful. You know, because the person you're talking to already knows everything. You notice, and you what whatever you are having, what you know also you know everything already. So like for example. People complaining, then it just amplifies, it goes through the new cycle. I, I love the ad. You do? I love well, the ad. I, I thought it was interesting. Yes, it was a little preachy. Yes, it was maybe a little heavy-handed. But I do think that you know it helped um, the discussion. Um, the, the tweet that the TV presenter, Piers Morgan, put out saying that you know this was um, Gillette, I guess, you know, it's, it's foray into feminism, he, w he was against that. I thought was was interesting because you're right. Everyone will have a backlash, but are brands brave enough to weather that backlash? Well, I think I personally, I think the big brands are aware and are mature enough to understand. Is it about size? Do you have to be, you know, a certain um, size and uh, have a little no. health with heft within the no, uh, no, consumer no, no. market to, to be right, able right to be mind, brave? Right mind, and you know where you're coming from, a clean place. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of people who don't like Piers Morgan himself just for being Piers Morgan. That's I mean, let's true. not talk about his opinions, you know. I mean, this morning, uh, Tony Flanders closed his Facebook account, which is about, you know, I think 760,000 viewers. So much hate on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> so we are living in a world like this, you know. And I think we are mature enough to filter and uh, work through the system to realize that uh, one commercial does not empower an entire generation of people like that. Do, do brands worry about the backlash? You know, I mean, that was almost a PR disaster for uh, for PNG, uh, so for Gillette in, in North America. Are brands conscious and worry about um, any kind of repercussions when they launch a campaign? I think that's, that was a bit of an unexpected um, of the backlash, but I think the teams like firmly believe that this is where Gillette One stands for, mm -hmm. and in order for the brand to actually evolve and and continue to believe what we think is better even for society and as a brand where we want to position our brand, I think um, the, the team has done a great job to actually turn this around and make it into a more positive conversation because I think um, around the world, I think after we launched this campaign and there's this negative PR issues, the the conversation has been turned around to be a positive thing that right. more, more actually, even more women actually now supporting that campaign itself because mm -hmm. They, it relates to them very closely, right? Like how men actually would, some men actually right. like have that kind of behavior. Well, getting men involved in the conversation yes. is all to do with the, you know, with, with achieving gender parity, I think. Uh, so what else? So you've, Ham, you brought up really interesting uh, topic a little bit earlier. You said, you know, previously there was um, greenwashing, using your words, and now there is, you know, a, a lot of uh, brands focusing on female empowerment. Do you see a trend of what's next? I mean, um, as brands, uh, as, as consumers expect brands to take a stand on cultural issues, successful brands have to have their pulse on the next conversation. Uh, yeah. Do you have an inkling as to or teaser as to what you suspect will be a next conversation? Okay, um, 
I can't tell the future very clearly. <laughs> no crystal <laughs> ball today. <laughs> but uh, most brands have the pulse on movements anyway. Mm. And they will do what is necessary to play a meaningful role in that conversation. Um, whether they are qualified to be part of the conversation will always be a question. Whether they are committed to that conversation is also another, another point to bear in mind. And whether they are relevant to the conversation. And now this conversation are driven, uh, is driven by women's consumers, nowadays better known as audience. Mm. And this is, will happen all the time yeah, by marketers. Yeah. Moving forward, I think uh, in our country, if I may suggest, that um, we have to stop uh, looking at uh, these things in silos, if it's possible. Women, men, children, youth, you know, or by race or whatever. I think we should all come together and, and all with all the fantastic money available in marketing, unite and actually talk about everybody as one, as a race, as a single human race in Malaysia, multicultural, beautiful, fantastic race, you know, and make that the big thing. Instead of Mother's Day and Father's Day and Valentine's Day, why don't you take all your money and put it into this national cause? There you go. On that note, that's all the time we have for the show today. You've been watching The Brand. Thank you so much for being on the show. I'll be back same time next week to look at the advertising industry.